from B, C, D, and E. So that one had up to E. We look at number two. This is a math question. So they had to read about termites here, and they have a little data table here. And then uh, there's AI, which is pretty much just reading the graph or reading the data table. AII, math, calculate. III, using the data to determine the amount, that's a calculation. IV is, is not a calculation question, so they could answer that first. When they get to B, it looks like it's got some numbers in here. It looks like it's going to be a calculation question, but actually it's not a calculation question, and neither is C. So if I, it, this, we just looked, it was a 3.57 national average. If you could get the point here and the point here and the point here, you've probably, and maybe one of these up, one of these up here, and, I'm, and that's it, then you may very well be at the national average on the math question without doing any math, because I know this is where most students suffer. Um, and then three, this one happened to be about zebra mollusks, so they had this little map, and they had to answer A, B, C, D, E, and F. And if we look, this is a good example, identify and explain. Discuss two, capital. So these are not these are not just one sentence answers. If they had just said identify one impact, then you could have done that in one sentence, but it didn't. Most of the time it says to identify and explain. Now here, identify another invasive species looks like it's going to be a one sentence kind of answer until you get over here and describe an impact. So nope, this D is not a one sentence answer either. Uh, we have a question that came. Courtney, there's a question that came in. What is the okay. format of the FRQ answer sheet? Do the kids have a big blank page? Is it not have, divided up with the sub-questions? Right. Their, their test booklet, I think that's what they're asking about. What does the test booklet look like? Is that, is that the question? Exactly. Okay. So, yes, they're going to, on the test booklet, this, let's say it's question number four. Question number four will be written just like this at the top. And then, so that's about half a page. And then it will start with lines and lines underneath, and then there'll be lines, a whole page of lines on the next side, and then another whole page of lines, and probably six or seven pages of lined paper for question four. And the same for one, two, three. So I, in my class, when we take FRQs, they're allowed one sheet of paper. And I tell them, if they cannot get the answer on the front and back, they are making stuff up. That never should you need to go on to a second sheet. Um, so I tell mine when they take the actual FRQ, they should answer and answer and answer and then end up going, okay, skip that page, skip that page, skip that page. Okay, here's question number two because there should have left a lot of room. I find that kids that fill up all the line paper at the reading don't get any points. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just trying to guess, and they're just like throwing out everything they can think of. So, But that's what it looks like, the question and then lines and lines and lines. And one okay. other question. Another question, how is identify and explain different from identify and describe? It's not. No, not really. It's just how they wrote it. Okay. Yeah. And, and then finally, here's number four. And this is a good example of if we go back to the – this one scored a 4.0 national average. Well, if we look at it, it was about global warming. A, they had to do a little calculation. Even though it's not the math question, like I said, there could be math on any question. It's just not hard. All they had to do was say 50 times 3 and then um, convert it to meters. That was two points. Okay, you're already halfway there, and you haven't known anything about global warming. All you knew was how to multiply 50 times 3 and convert it to meters. Then, yes, you had to know something about global warming here. Yes, you had to know something about global warming here. But then when you get down to D, Describe one negative economic impact and two viable strategies that governments could use. This, since it's one, that's one point. This, since it says two, that's two points. If they can talk money and jobs, it's about the sea. Talk something about jobs near the coast. And if they can talk, educate the government about global warming, which they can get from the question. Uh, educate the, the government, I'm sorry. Educate the, educate the public. If they can talk, you know, tax people that live on the coast, if they can talk, um, uh, make, a, make a law or something, that's a point. That's two points. If they had gotten A and then I and I, I they've already hit five points and haven't shown it. They haven't shown that they know anything about global warming. They've already beat the national average. 
and hopefully they'll know something about global warming and can get some more points. So you can see question number four is generally pretty easy, but oftentimes low scoring. Um, I think because people run out of time, they get rushed. They don't have time to really think about the question. That's what I have other than to answer some questions, if anybody has any. Um, there, just, there was a couple of WebEx issues, but I think those are straightened out. Uh, Therese, if you could just raise your hand so I know that you are actually on the same page as us now. Yes? Thank you. We're good, Courtney. Okay. No, I was going to answer the questions. I, have a, I just noticed um, there are some, while well, I was, talking um, some private questions that have come up for me and I haven't had a ch chance to read those yet so if you're waiting for me to answer a chat that just came to me I'm sorry I'll get to it and I'll get to it at the end any other we're, we're, questions? At six, we're at 621 now just to give you a time set. okay no I'm done if anybody has questions that's it well you want to go through those pri ones that were sent to um, you privately oh there there's a couple coming in now do you okay. see these on the chat now um, is it the one from Den the, uh, yeah, one Denny? Yeah, Denny and Tom and Elisa and Stuart and Patrick. Mm, I've already answered that one. I've already answered that one. Way behind voice question three now. I don't know what that means. Okay. Um, ask, from a few years ago, there was a question on urbanization that asked the student to identify and describe two ways in which the local hydrologic cycle of urban areas differs from nearby rural areas. Suppose the student writes one difference is the amount of runoff is greater in urban areas because there is a greater amount of pavement, which inhibits infiltration. I think, I think I answered that in one sentence. Would I not get the description point for the identification? Okay. To everybody, including Mike. Yes, sometimes you can get, if you can adequately describe it in a sentence, great. But I tell my students most of the time you can't. Most of the time, you're going to need a little bit more. But, yes, I would say you definitely adequately described your answer in one sentence. It was just a really long, so you kind of got it all in there. So it, that just the next one says, examples of reviewing, so it is not all PowerPoint notes or straight lecture. I've used concept maps and whiteboards, other suggestions. During review time, what I've done is, we have stations around my classroom. Um, for example, one station, kind of like games, but not exactly games. One station, it's a box filled with just uh, random vocab terms that ha they're from our class. I just typed them up real quick. And they play taboo with, with another partner where maybe the first one, they draw the word eutrophication. Well, the person needs to know what eutrophication means in order to play taboo to describe it to the other person. So they could say like, Okay, this is when the water turns really green because nitrates and phosphates ran off from a hog farm. And then the other person would say eutrophication, so they can review that way. I also have stations where I have just photocopied every single released FRQ and every single released rubric, and they quiz each other that way without actually writing the FRQ. So, I mean, things like that is what I do. Okay, um, Stuart says I haven't seen a design and experiment question in a while. I agree. I haven't either, and my guess is that, and again, I'm not on the test development committee, but my guess is that those are too hard to grade at this point. When we've got 100,000 to grade and growing, to, and every single experiment is going to be different and it's going to have to take a lot of thought, that's my guess as to why we haven't seen it in a while. And I'm guessing, though they need to know how to design an experiment, for sure, I'm guessing we're not going to see that on an FRQ again, but I don't know. But that's my guess, and I think I just lost everybody. Did I just oh, lose you, you just again? Got, yeah, you just got bumped out again. Oh, okay. so can well, you I'm, not... I think you still hear me, but you're going to have to. Um, yeah, I'll read the uh, questions for you then.